Hello, and welcome to another Premier Draft Beer Services training video, where we bring out the best in beer. Today's video will be about long draw line cleaning. Let's get started. Begin by making note of the brand of products that you need to clean in their proper order. A photograph can help ensure everything is put back together how you found it. First step to success is documentation of our services provided. Here is a clear image of what needs to be documented and take a photo of. Location to service, date, chemical used, quantity of lines, and the initials of the technician performing the service. Begin by decoupling from the keg. Line up the lugs from both the keg coupler and the line cleaning coupler, and ensure the gasket is properly seated. Rest the keg couplers in the direction in which they were removed. This will help when reattaching later. Now begin to place the fobs into cleaning mode. Here are examples of the different types of fobs you may find at different accounts. Open faucets and let gravity empty any beer left in the line before you attach your jumper lines and pump. A best practice is to circulate warm bath temperature water ranging between 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Begin to loosen the coupling ring with your spanner wrench by turning clockwise and remove all the faucets from the tower. Today we will be pumping left to right. On your next rotation, pump right to left to ensure opposite flow rates for maximum cleaning performance. Using your orange jumper line washers, begin to connect your jumper lines. You can now begin to visualize the direction of flow and how your lines are connected in the cooler and how they are connected at the tower. Safety check. Proper PPE is imperative for safety. Nitro gloves and protective eyewear are required when handling both caustic and acid solutions. There are different ways to drain. If the system is a short long draw, use your bucket. If it's a long draw, you can use a nearby sink. Turn on your pump and ensure the direction of flow is proper. Best practice is to mix a caustic at a 2% ratio for normal cleaning and a 3% ratio for problematic or dirty systems. Now notice the flow rate changing from beer to water to blue caustic. While the system is draining, begin to remove your faucets from your beer handles. Now before you begin to recirculate, ensure that you have flushed all beer and all off-colored beer caustic blend out first. Make sure you are circulating only caustic that resembles the same color as what is mixed in your bucket for the maximum strength cleaning. Gather your faucets to be disassembled and begin soaking. Steps to success. Further documentation. Here are different photos of what your process should look like. Faucets disassembled soaking in caustic. Photo of blue caustic filled jumper lines. Bucket circulating blue caustic. Pump plugged in and a clear picture of the draft tower with brands. Your draft sticker as well. With the faucet soaking and after taking your pictures, now is a good time to purge the fobs. If there is no plumbing, bring a cup or a bucket to purge. 
The takeaway is, any part that contacts beer must also make contact with caustic. Using your faucet brush, begin to brush every part of the faucet that makes contact with beer. Also inspect the faucet washer to ensure that it is in good condition. Replace as needed. Common beer faucets will have two vent holes that if left neglected will plug up and cause pouring issues. Notice how the rear and front vent holes are completely clear. If there is any obstruction, use a paper clip to remove any hop resins or biomass developments. As for brass, we need to remove all staining from the lever as well as the plunger assembly. There are many different methods to use with your scrubbing pad. Remember to save your hands. Scrub smart, not hard. Drop the collar and the bonnet and ensure you are scrubbing in the middle of the lever as well as the tip as well. When finished scrubbing or cleaning, proper rinsing is crucial. Any faucet not properly rinsed that may still have residual, caustic may stain or damage countertops, so do ensure everything is properly and fully rinsed. You can now reassemble your faucets in the opposite order that they were taken apart. Fully sealed Perlick style faucets will need more attention when reassembling. Ensure the bearing cup is lined up with the faucet body and that the lever's direction moves smoothly forward to back. After reassembling your faucets, you can begin to fill a bucket with cold rinse water. Begin reattaching the handles to the faucet lever. While turning the handle, simultaneously spin up the collar to tighten the handle to its collar. When your 15 minute pump cycle has completed, you can begin your rinse cycle. Continue to add cold water as needed until it is completely flushed. Next, using your pH meter, Test the water exiting your drain line and ensure pH level has returned to that of your local tap water supply, typical being 6.5 pH to 9 pH. Once your proper pH levels are assessed, you can shut off your pump and begin to remove your jumper lines from the tower. Purge your pump of any remaining water and set aside. Begin to inspect the cleanliness of the shank and the tower itself. For heavily soiled shanks, safely pour PBW mixed with warm water over the shank and prepare for cleaning. You can insert your faucet brush into the shank and remove any remaining material. 
You can use your keg coupler brush, scrub behind the coupler ring, as well as the sleeve of the shank. Once clean to satisfaction, you can clean with pour, pouring cold wince rotter over the shank to remove any remaining PBW. Notice here the cleanliness of the shank. Wipe down your tower area. Now begin to reattach the faucets to the tower. Notice the teeth on the faucet as well as the teeth on the shank. These need to interlock into grooves of each other. Begin to reattach by using one hand to slightly rock or jiggle the faucet back and forth to set the teeth into the grooves of the shank. Once hand tightened, grab your spanner wrench to fully tighten. Remember this is plumbing, so do not over tighten. Next it's time to inspect the keg coupler ring. Make sure the seal is free of any depressions or cuts. Now you can clean and scrub the coupler as well. Dry out the down stem, removing any remedial beer with a clean rag. Repeat this with the remaining kegs and keg couplers. Notice the air gap in the line when reattached. If it stays in place like seen here, no liquid is flowing. This is what you want. If the air gap begins to move or travel, you may have left a faucet lever in the open position or teeth were not properly seated between the shank and the faucet. Immediately disengage the keg coupler and remedy the issue. With the help of gravity, begin to fill the fobs by guiding the air gap and the jumper line out. Continue to purge the fob until all air has left the jumper line and the fob. Return the float valve to its normal position for pouring. Now we can open the faucets to begin the flow of beer with water in front of it. Once the water turns fully to beer, it is safest from this point to count 8 seconds to ensure you are pouring nothing but pure beer that is not diluted with any water. To avoid a service call request later, make sure the system is pouring properly before you leave. If you yourself cannot pour a proper pint now, the bartender themselves may not be able to during service later. Here is an example of what beer should look like leaving a faucet. Clear with a nice arc. Flow rate of approximately 2 ounces per second to fill a 16 ounce pint glass in 8 seconds with a 1 inch collar of foam. Clean up your workspace, leaving no trace behind, cleaner than you found it. Make contact with ownership or management and communicate services provided. Thanks for watching this educational resource. For additional resources, contact your territory supervisor.